here at the Maple Street 500. Here comes the Previa! Back in 1990, Toyota introduced a new radically designed minivan called the Previa in an attempt to compete against the more conservatively styled yet best-selling Chrysler minivans. Often called egg-shaped, since that's exactly what it was, the Previa had its four-cylinder engine sitting under the driver's seat to provide better weight distribution, but that also prevented the option of a larger V6, leading to a supercharger added for the U.S. market by 1994. However, sales never came close to Chrysler, leading to its replacement by the Camry-based Sienna in 1998. Yet the Previa name lived on in other markets until 2019. This is the story of the Toyota Previa. This is my old car. Guys. Uh-oh. Gotta cut to commercial. I love what you do for me, Toyota! After my recent two episodes on the Chrysler minivans, many viewers left comments about the caravan competitors, and a popular request was a Toyota Previa. But even if I didn't get too many requests for it, I definitely wanted to do a video on the Previa, just because it was so bizarre. A bizarre design that was still remembered a few years ago by the writers of the 2015 remake of the movie Vacation. Whereas the original 1983 classic had the Wagon Queen family truckster based on a 1979 Ford LTD Country Squire. This is the automobile you should be using, the Wagon Queen family truckster. You think you hate it now, but wait till you drive it. The newer movie used an old Previa to create the Tartan Prancer. It has a sensor. It won't let you slam the door on your armor leg. Personally, I think they should have just used the Previa in its original egg-shaped glory. It certainly couldn't have made this horrible movie any worse. Hey. Oh! If you think back to the typical Toyotas on U.S. and Canadian roads in the 1980s, cars like the Camry and Corolla were big sellers. And that's just the beginning. More Camrys, more Corollas, more trucks, more vans, and they're in stock now. But definitely not because of style. They were so generic and bland, but their build quality and reliability was often so much better than their American-built counterparts, and that clearly was more important to their owners. However, when it came to Toyota's first attempt at a minivan, it was definitely a small van, but the term minivan hadn't been coined yet when Toyota offered the Light Ace and Town Ace wagons in their home market of Japan beginning in 1970. To maximize interior space in the smallest footprint allowed, with seating up to eight people, the Light Ace and Town Ace were a cab over design, putting the driver's seat above the front axle. It was still front engine, but most of the engine access was under the driver's seat. Like all vans back then, a single sliding door was offered on the curbside, which for right-hand drive models in Japan was on the left side of the van. The same platform was also used for a pickup model. By the time the Light Ace and Town Ace models reached their second generation, Toyota readied a new model for export to North America for 1983, but the export didn't maintain either of the model names used in Japan. Instead, it was simply marketed as a Toyota van. A dependable seven-passenger van for moving your family. A roomy cargo van for moving your stuff. Its arrival nearly coincided with the launch of the Dodge Caravan and Plymouth Voyager that same year. And although both the Chrysler and Toyota vans had a typical 80s boxy style, the Caravan kept the engine entirely in front of the driver, along with front-wheel drive, whereas a Toyota van was rear-wheel drive. The Caravan also allowed for easier entry and exit, thanks to having the doors behind the front wheels as opposed to above them. To help set themselves apart from Chrysler, the Toyota van offered options like an ice maker and refrigerator between the front seats and two sunroofs. But the Toyota's higher load floor and less car-like ride was a clear disadvantage. Although selling close to 60,000 per year when exports first arrived, it was down to around 14,000 by 1988, a drop in the bucket compared to rival Chrysler. An all new van design was started in 1987 to gain new market share and the end result was the Previa, a minivan design no one had ever seen before or since. How bizarre. The name Previa was derived from the Spanish and Italian words for preview, the idea being that the Previa would preview new technologies for future minivans. Automobile magazine called it a new standard by which all minivans will be judged. One key issue with the previous van was its taller size relative to its width, and the front engine placement resulted in a car less well planted on the road. This looks like a job for Toyota Wonder Wagon. So this led to the idea of moving the engine further back and laying the engine on its side at a 75 degree angle. Although the driver no longer sat above the axle as the previous van did, the engine placement resulted in the driver still sitting above the engine. So the driver's seat was designed to be lifted up to access the oil dipstick. Engine access was also available under the passenger seat. But luckily, that side was used for less common maintenance, like changing spark plugs, as it took a lot more effort to access. The Previa had more interior room than Chrysler, thanks to its mid-engine design, which moved the driver closer to the front. It also had a clever design for the third row, which could be folded flat and then lifted up against the side walls. 
Chrysler's rear bench was removable, but still took two people to remove. The refrigerator between the front seats from the old Toyota van continued with the Previa and was called the hot cold box as it could heat beverages too. The Previa was also offered with a five-speed manual transmission, something that Chrysler was phasing out of its minivans by the time the Previa began in 1990. But the Previa also offered an all-wheel drive option, something that Chrysler took a couple more years to make optional in their second-gen minivans. Under the Previa's hood was access to the oil reservoir, coolant, battery, power steering pump, alternator, air conditioning compressor, and radiator fan. To make this design work, the engine actually had two drive shafts, one leading back to the transmission and rear wheels, and one leading forward to run everything under the front hood. This front drive shaft was called the Supplemental Accessory Drive System, or SADS. I'm guessing the Toyota engineer didn't notice the irony in the English translation. SADS was unique to the Previa, and only worked with the 2.2 or 2.4 cylinder engines that could fit in the Previa. This prevented any future upgrade to a V6, which by that point, Chrysler, as well as the new minivans from GM, were offering. It's simply amazing. And it's like nothing you've ever experienced. The four-cylinder Previa, with around 130 horsepower, simply wasn't enough power to satisfy most American buyers, which is likely why Previa sales dropped by around 40% after just the first two years. To help get the horsepower closer to what competitors offered with their V6 models, in 1994, Toyota came up with yet another radical idea to add a supercharger, which added about 6 psi of boost, resulting in a new horsepower rating of 158. So yes, owners of the Previa could brag that their minivan was mid-engine and supercharged. Ironically, the addition of the supercharger also required that the Previa could no longer have a manual transmission. Despite the addition of the supercharger, sales for 1994 dropped only around 18,000 for U.S. sales. Meanwhile, Chrysler was working on the redesigned third-gen minivan to launch in 1995 for the 1996 model year. Toyota knew the redesign was coming, and it was clear that their radical design, which was supposed to preview future minivan technology, hence the Previa name, wasn't working for U.S. and Canadian buyers. Failures like this are uncommon for Toyota, so to help mitigate it, a name change was needed. In the U.S. and Canada, one of Toyota's best-selling cars back then was the Camry, and its platform was much more flexible than the Previa's bizarre mid-engine layout. The awards, the honors, the accolades for the Toyota Camry continue to rise. As a result, Toyota was able to adapt the front-engine, front-wheel drive Camry platform to become its next minivan, now called the Sienna. It was even built in the same Kentucky plant as the Camry, so as a result, a right-hand drive model was never offered resulting in the Sienna never being sold in right-hand drive markets like Japan or Australia. Like Chrysler did with its third-generation minivans, the additional driver's side sliding door on the Sienna was an option, and its rounded styling wasn't all that different from Chrysler or from Ford's new Windstar. GM had also moved on from its Dustbuster vans by this point, so although Toyota started the trend of more egg-shaped minivans with the Previa, everyone else had caught up when the Previa ended its run in North America. Today, the Sienna is in its fourth generation that began in 2020, and is still competing with Chrysler and their Pacifica. However, back when the Previa ended its North American run in 1998, it didn't end in other markets like Europe and Australia. A second-gen Previa switched to a more conventional front engine and front-wheel drive layout. However, by the time the third gen started in 2006, it only kept the Previa name in China and some other East Asian markets until its final model year in 2019. Today, seeing a Previa on U.S. or Canadian roads is relatively rare thanks to the low numbers sold, but those that are on the road could have 200,000 miles or more, as the Toyota engines and parts have still proven to be reliable. However, when they do fail, finding parts probably isn't easy thanks to so many parts in the Previa, including the whole SADS design, not being in any other Toyota. If you still own a Previa today, or kept one running for many years, tell us all about it in the comments. I'm sure it had to be a lot better than this piece of it. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid 2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time. You can blow through that, it's only glass. Yes, but you're forgetting one important piece of information. We're on the second floor!